Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Please be seated. <clears throat> you all look so good out there. I'm going to take a little photo before we get going. It's just too good not to, I'll tell you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Today we proclaim and claim once again a new way of life. We recommit ourselves to be people of resurrection joy. We join together to be strengthened through our prayer, our worship, our friendship, all of which we share by the grace of God. We are here today to celebrate by the grace of God, we've found our way to this community of love from many places and walks of life. I also want to welcome those joining us today through God's gift of technology in many different places. We have different histories, experiences, priorities, beliefs, but there's something about this Jesus. There's something about Jesus that draws us, brings us together, to be God's people in community, people of resurrection joy. Something about Jesus. Let's take a quick little journey back in time to those first people who knew God through Christ. Jesus spoke to them and they were with him. They followed him. They saw him heal. They saw him challenge injustice. They saw him pray. God was doing a new thing through Jesus. Some said he was the Messiah, the long-awaited savior of the people. Others said a prophet, others their teacher. And still others didn't know what to think, but they wanted to know more. Then came that terrible day, Jesus crucified by the powerful who feared his message, feared the following that this troublemaker, good trouble, the following that this troublemaker was acquiring as he went from place to place, speaking of God's love and acting on God's love. Hope had died, or so it seemed, and then the women, who had been with Jesus all along, they went to the tomb to tend to his body, but the tomb was empty. They were confused. And then the angels appeared and reminded them about what Jesus had said, what he had predicted. Could it be? Is it possible? It doesn't seem possible. He has risen? The men we hear thought it an idle tale. Really, who wouldn't? And that should have been the end of it. So how did we get from that moment? How did we get from that story, from a corner of the earth? How did this become a movement that would touch all parts of our globe and our hearts? How did we get from here, from there to here? And how do we get from here to there? <laughs> In Luke's gospel, we hear Peter, I assume he was with the guys, right? Maybe he was saying, yeah, yeah, idle tale. But then something happened. In his heart, he had some hope. He hoped and he ran to the tomb to see for himself. The body was gone. He was amazed. Peter, like so many others, longed for that new creation. That longing led to action, led to community that would become a worldwide movement. It didn't start with creeds. It did not start with creeds. It started with a longing, with hope and courage and even imagination. And this is what keeps the Jesus movement alive today. This is the sort of hope and longing that inspired the prophet Isaiah. We know Jesus was not the start of God's longing. In fact, when we understand more, we understand 
Easter joy. The more we know about the context, the more we understand resurrection. The prophet Isaiah knew all about a world where the powerful dominated everyone else and exploited them for gain. He knew about suffering, sadness, and death. The prophet spoke to people who'd been in exile and suffered. And so it was surprising, really, that Isaiah could say these things. But how did he do it? Inspired by God. We hear from Isaiah that God was creating a new way forward. I am about to create new heaven and a new earth. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. The Hebrew prophets were very practical. They cared about the daily struggle of those without power and without resources, those who were exploited by the powerful and exploited by systems that seemed impossible to change. Jesus was born into a world where that setting was reality, where the ideas of Isaiah were known. So the big point that I'm hoping to make today is that Easter was not a standalone miracle, but part of God's ongoing love and care for humanity. Richard Rohr writes in his book, The Universal Christ, the subtitle is How a Forgotten Reality Can Change Everything We See, Hope For, and Believe. Rohr says, I want to enlarge your view of resurrection from a one-time miracle in the life of Jesus that asks for assent and belief to a pattern of creation, a pattern of creation that has always been true and that invites us to much more than belief in a miracle. Roar goes on, it must be more than a private victory for one man to prove that he is God. How can Easter be more than a private victory for Jesus and for us? How can Easter be real for us in a way that really matters in our lives and in the communities to which we belong? In a sense, we make it real. We make it real because like Peter, we long for it. We have been created in the image of God. And at our core, we long for what God desires, peace, justice, healing, communities of care, and policies that respect the dignity of every human being. We humans, we are able to do so much. We are able to create, sustain, support. And when we do these things, We see God's new creation. We are part of that new creation. And we experience resurrection joy. Amen.